Hello and welcome back to Coin Lady channel. There will be a slight delay in the revealing of all of the Hinman documents. At this point, I'm going to assume that everyone is aware that Judge Torres denied the SEC's motion to permanently seal the Hinman Ethereum Free Pass related emails, drafts, and associated documents. Thus, the verdict was ultimately favorable to Ripple. But now we hear there will be a delay, and there is much conjecture since this news came out this morning. A possible explanation for this is a settlement reached between the SEC and Ripple, as has been widely speculated. And some local lawyers consider that a distinct possibility. Even while some lawyers in our area might take this as a hint, the majority of them disagree. Consequently, I will provide you with a number of viewpoints, including that of attorney Mark Farrell, a former counsel for the SEC. I have some materials from XRP community attorney Fred Rispoli. Jeremy Hogan and John Deaton, two attorneys, provided me with materials. But I do want to clarify something before we go any further. I come from no financial or legal background. Nothing they say or write should be taken as recommendations to purchase or sell any particular security. Just a hobbyist here that occasionally posts films to YouTube on various crypto-related topics. Oh, man. So, here's a splashy headline from the SEC's battle with crypto newcomer Ripple. The SEC and Ripple have jointly asked for more time to file redacted versions of the summary judgment materials and accompanying exhibits, which will make public redacted versions of William Hinman's controversial speech drafts on cryptocurrency. Redacted copies of summary judgment materials are due by June 6, 2023, but the parties want that date extended until June 13 of that year. That being the case, let me explain. Why the Ripple agreed to this extension request is a mystery to me. I can't imagine a single reason why they would support it. I noticed that attorney Deaton was making assumptions, and it could be that easy. I overheard him muse that maybe it was just the SEC pushing for this. Ripple may have concluded that it wasn't worth fighting for an extension because judges tend to grant them, and this one wouldn't be for an unreasonable amount of time. That's a valid point of view, and I get it. The only part I don't really understand is why you wouldn't have to actively sign on to it. Neither resistance nor active participation is required on your part. That has left me with a bit of head scratching. It's not a great deal. They will not be able to prevent this news from being shared with the public. Not with this strategy, however. Guests are still welcome to enter. However, Fox Business reporter Alina Terrett has filed the following report earlier today. Also, she added that the SEC and Ripple had asked for an extra week to submit the redacted Hinman documents and other documentation. Because of the extensive redactions and documents, the new filing deadline has been set for June 13 th, 2023. Eventually, though, Judge Torres returned not long after that request was made, and she did little more than report. Yes, your request has been approved. The time extension is now formalized. Now, an anonymous writer using the handle Ego Death questioned whether the SEC and Ripple were trying to limit the extensive exposure of Hinman emails in order to safeguard the SEC's reputation. It appears that an agreement is being negotiated. Put me straight if I'm wrong. It's okay if folks want to know now. All of us are seeking the truth. Since the guidelines already imposed by Judge Torres and the SEC v. Ripple case are somewhat narrow, I will suggest that perfectly legitimate dialogue is going to go out in hypothetical redactions, this and that. The scope of what can be concealed is limited. There is no doubt that the content of the emails contains all of the information we would consider to be relevant to the speeches that are currently being released. Unless there is a settlement, in which case part of this may remain confidential, it will be made public. However, I still don't buy into that explanation. And Attorney Deaton has some comments about that, which I will share with you after a short break in the video. Mark Farrell, a former attorney for the SEC, published the following in response to this critic. To me, that sounds like wild guesswork. Time required to comply with the unsealing order is unknown to me, however it does not appear excessive. It's odd that attorneys would intentionally mislead the court about the motivation behind the motion. Moreover, one can never tell. The Securities and Exchange Commission is a terrible agency, and I wouldn't put my life in the hands of any of these lawyers if they paid me. But, 
but I'm not making that claim. It's still possible that they're imagining a lot of hard work because of this. And as the video progresses, you'll see. That's not an implausible assumption to make. Perhaps they're merely considering the possibility that we may or may not require the extra time. Why not give ourselves a bit more room to breathe? Perhaps this is how the SEC asset is designed to function. That's what we're thinking, at least. Again, attorney attorney Mark Farrell, having actually worked at the SEC, will have some perspective that, you know, other attorneys might not necessarily have. And here we have attorney Fred Rispoli, who tagged attorney Fragile and had a question for him. I get what he's saying, even though I disagree with him on many points. In my opinion, this lawyer seems intellectually forthright. This is the impression he has given me thus far. Fred Rispoli, an attorney, subsequently emailed his client Mark Farrell. How does the SEC handle emergency settlements? If the SEC's legal department has basically settled, when is the next meeting of the Commission scheduled to take place? Is an ad hoc meeting necessary to agree a settlement? When talks are taking place, is there consistent communication between the Commission and the litigation team? Which is a legitimate concern on my part, as I am completely unfamiliar with the local procedures pertaining to such matters. Here is Lawyer Fatal's response. A recommendation can be heard by the commissioners outside of the weekly schedule if there is an impending deadline, though this is rarely done. During settlement negotiations, I have never seen the commissioners involved, albeit on contentious issues, high-ranking officials and commissioner staff might confer to determine the likelihood of approval. Here is what Jeremy Hogan, an attorney, has to say about that. According to his letter, the SEC and Ripple have asked for and been granted a further week until June 13 to publicly file their motions, which does include the Hinman emails. You've found the proper site if you're looking for wild guesses about what this all signifies. Check out the comments, there's a plethora of humorous feedback there. Perhaps you already knew that if you follow any crypto-related accounts on Twitter. Many different perspectives exist on this issue. Also, I didn't notice anything particularly bizarre. I don't think it's weird, folks just have different interpretations of what this could entail for their settlement. Although I want to be proven wrong and a settlement is desirable, I must admit that I am not yet convinced that this is an indication that it will occur. This is not to say, however, that it is impossible. And if it happens, I'll be as ecstatic as the rest of you, because I agree that it's possible. To this attorney Hogan received the response, can you give us the legal reasons why they would jointly request this extension? From a certain person using the handle CryptoDog. The SEC probably asked for extra time since there are thousands of pages to read, so they figured they could need it or anything else, according to attorney Hogan. Tony Hogan, I don't understand. What do you call it? What's the deal, babe? Someone called Johnny also emailed attorney Hogan, asking, so when the emails are released, will there be like two or three sentences or words on each page because they have been so heavily redacted? That's how I'm feeling, anyway, I'm just hoping it doesn't come true. Yeah, exactly what I was trying to talk about a few minutes ago. Attorney Hogan denied stating that redactions would be made only to the extent permitted by the judge. This judge was quite stingy. Almost everything is open to us. No, that's not what I detest, and I know what I hate. Here's the lawyer's take on things, Mr. Rispoli. And he does consider this a possible sign of a negotiated resolution. They're not happy with this development. Here then is what Fred Rispoli, an attorney, had to say. I find this quite strange. In-depth negotiations on these redactions have already taken place between the parties. It's strange the first time around, but that might be due solely to the text. I get the impression that something has shifted and there is a mad dash for control behind the scenes because of this. To expound on my own crazy assumption, he adds that Judge Torres' rulings may have prodded the parties into acknowledging their flaws. Additionally, a final attempt at compromise is made. There is only one compromise that makes any sense to me right now, and that consists of two bullet points. First, Ripple must pay a substantial fine and comply with a registration requirement for all future XRP sales. Second, XRP is not a secondary security. The exchange of XRP is not a security. 
The characteristic of a brilliant compromise, he continues, is that both parties make significant concessions without coming out ahead. Now that I think about it, I suppose I secretly hope he's correct. And here's the second one, if we resolve this, we won't have to worry about any appeals that might come out of it. And I'm not even sure there would be an audience for it. If Ripple prevails, for example, I doubt there will be an appeal because of the potential for a binding settlement at a higher level court in the event of a poor outcome in the SEC case. However, it seems quite likely that Ripple would file an appeal in the event of a loss. If I were the SEC, I could understand why they wouldn't, but I can't say why they wouldn't. I could be that they wouldn't. We wouldn't have to worry about this case dragging on much longer if he could reach a settlement. This also happened, of course. At the last minute, a comment that was made to Attorney Rispoli could be a good sign, Fred. Next, Attorney Rispoli made the following observation. This many communities. At the 11th hour have a baby. The point is lost on you. If there is something going on beneath the surface here, as it seems there might be, then this isn't exactly a stroke of luck, though even if that is the case, I'm still sitting here wondering what it could be. I don't know if there will be a settlement, but it seems likely given that they have delayed the release so that they may continue negotiating over a possible settlement for another week. I think that extra week will be the deciding factor. And then this entire concept, like a Tony Hogan kind of got it like, so what are they of what are they actually misinforming the court about why they want this extra week, or would they actually do that either side? I'm not really convinced either. Just checking that I didn't forget anything. Oh. Someone named Tim posed a legal query in a letter to attorney Rispoli. Is it possible that the SEC and Ripple may reach an agreement to prevent the unsealing of the Hinman emails at this point? After Judge Torres reached this decision, they were supposed to be released automatically. Therefore, you no longer have any leverage in the negotiations. If Mark and Rispoli reached a settlement today, they might be able to avoid public disclosure of the terms. But, as I've indicated, I don't think it's a safe long-term bet for the SEC, as I expect that someone will manage to get them publicized. That makes a lot of sense to me now. In any case, we don't want these things to get out, even if that were the SEC's strategy, which I highly doubt it is. They are theoretically already out of circulation because Ripple possesses them. The only question is whether or not the general public will see it. Well, he's implying that maybe not if there's a compromise here. Nonetheless, the SEC is overjoyed. Another trial will inevitably revisit this issue. And this information is almost certainly going to leak out eventually. So, obviously, the SEC is aware of this. He can't help but wonder if this is really a consideration for them. In my opinion, the answer is yes. Here is what lawyer John Deaton had to say about it all. Many people have speculated that the settlement talks are the reason for the delay. Before giving the Hinman emails to Ripple, they may have reached a settlement if they had been useful. In my perspective, the SEC has conceded that the Hinman emails will be released to the public at some point. Rosalind Layton is the standard bearer Forbes writer, but her most recent piece was pulled down due to an incident. Whether or not she will continue to contribute to Forbes, where she has covered the SEC case for well over two years, is anyone's guess. Identified as Rosalind Layton. So, according to attorney Deaton, Rosalind Layton stepped in so that the public could view these records. Because the records must be made public, Judge Torres ruled that her motion was academic. The Second Circuit Court of Appeals will never reverse the decision. Coinbase for Dragon Chain. And so on will investigate obtaining these records. Because there are so many papers that need to be carefully redacted to satisfy her ruling, the SEC has recently submitted a joint request for a one-week delay. There's no way the SEC would write that and then try to appeal or file a petition of mandamus over it. The paperwork will soon arrive. Many folks are probably crossing their fingers that I'm incorrect. I hope I'm wrong since I've been wrong before. If I'm mistaken, I'll get up and dance. However, Gensler is charging ahead head first. He claims that Coinbase's statements that XRP is not a security are inaccurate, although he agrees that this is not the case. Isn't that a nice visual? For what reason would they accept a compromise? Why now? What would they benefit from doing so now? 
The question is that. For the simple reason that I seriously doubt they give a hoot about the leak of the Hinman emails. They probably know what's coming. Then it's the same as. Just saying. It's terrific that so many bright individuals can disagree with me, as I expected, said Attorney Deaton. We're all just guessing, but sometimes the simplest explanation is the best. How many pages of evidence have been produced in support of the motion for summary judgment? And this is illuminating as well. Here, have a look. He asks, want to take a guess at how much money Ripple will be billed from multiple paralegals, associates, and partners to review each document to ensure that each redaction complies and satisfies Judge Torres's decision? Before adding that the same people will have to look over the SEC submissions as well. My bare minimum is $250,000. It's crazy how quickly they recover, but if you want it done well, you have to pay for the best. Ripple appears to have retained top-tier legal counsel for this case. So, you estimate that all of this amounts to only $250,000. To reiterate what lawyer Deaton has said. Even he admits he can be incorrect. He simply denies that he is. So, perhaps an agreement can be reached. Perhaps I'm missing something obvious and this is a sign, but right now I can't see it. Leave a remark if you think I've missed something or if you have a different or more helpful viewpoint. Because of this, there is no definitive answer. Honestly, I find that discussing such topics is both entertaining and beneficial. That being said, count me in. It's okay if you disagree with me. No, I don't give out financial advice. Nothing I say or write should influence any transactions you make. If you found it entertaining, please show your appreciation by clicking the like button. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell to be notified. See you in the next one, bye.